Hello, my name is Patricia McNeely. I'm an Illumin Twin Flame from Chicago, Illinois. And today it is uh, July 18th. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that have been leading up to Twin Flames coming together, merging together, but also there are several things that have been going on behind the scenes. So I'm going to explain to you some of what the process has been and I think this will round out the picture for a lot of people. So again, uh, just to let you know who I am, I'm an Lumen Twin Flame. I live in Chicago, Illinois. I'm a part of the Blu-ray uh, and what this is, uh, what, what is the Blu-ray? I get a lot of questions on that. It's like some of us are riding in on uh, waves of energy, and uh, it's also in our aura. It's a part of our aura. It's a part of our makeup. Many of us now have different a different rainbow of colors that we've connected with, and uh, these are impulses of light from source. Now, without getting all technical, a lot of people say, well, what are the illumined, and how do I know if I'm illumined? In some ways, illumined are the people who are the entities who have had to try everything, touch everything, taste everything, lick everything, you know, put their finger in it, and um, they are sometimes the more adventurous people. Uh, some of them are even people around you. They could be a motorcycle uh, person. They could be a daredevilish kind of person or a person with a death wish. They could also be someone who's very sick because they have had soul damage as a result of being in too many situations or being in repetitive patterns. So um, as a whole, we are the uh, entities who have uh, had... Uh, once we left Source, we had our spiritual DNA, and we've opened and activated between us and our twin almost everything. Almost everything. Now, in the spiritual realms, we are called two ones because we are one soul, and yet there's two of us. There's a separation there in our soul. We are coming together again. Um, we are very revered. We have been the courageous ones, the pioneers, the examples. We are also source beings. So yes, we do test out things that we've created. And we're now at the end of um, this journey. It's the ending of the journey collectively, but also for many people is they're ready to really uh, embark on their oneness now. So what I'm going to talk to you about in this video is transmuting. And what that is, is um, this, some people may have heard this word in their physics high school class or high school biology or something like this. What this means is you're actually um, making energies into either a different form or you're getting rid of it. It basically, for the most part, means you're getting rid of stuff. And that's not very technical. So what are we doing here? It is unusable energies, it is usable energies, and it is what is unhealthy. Because at a higher realm, you don't always have the, you know, small bits here like rage or um, parts of fear that have uh, the density to hold it into place. This, the density that we had been living in can hold a lot of low emotions, low vibration. So energy is vibration. Um, we are the light and love. So we ourselves are an energetic being from source. We put ourselves into different forms that we ourselves have activated and created. So, you know, right now it's a human form. At another place in time, it was a different form, and we also are connected to other forms, such as animals, plants. You know, we have these connections that we've made. Now, I'm going to 
kind of give you an oversimplification so that you understand uh, what has been going on. There are personal energies that must be transmuted. There are collective energies from certain ethnic groups. There's also global and planetary energies and as well as cosmic energies that are being transmuted. Um, there are people or entities like myself who've agreed to do this. So this was in many ways the first step in getting back to where we want to be. It is, what do you do? It's the same thing you do when you clean house. You kind of sift through it and you're like, well, what do we want to keep? What do we, what can we use or recycle, reuse, resource? Or what just needs to go? And, you know, it's just beyond anything we want to keep. So that's what we have here. Now, there were three ways of getting rid of things. Uh, one I'll call the white hole. You're, some of you know this is the white light. You're sending certain things up into the white light where um, my feeling was it gets combined with other energies. It's back at source love. It's a part of all that is. And it's not intended to be disintegrated. It's intended to be reabsorbed for use in another form. Um, the black hole are, th are energies that are harmful at the spiritual level. And one example is escapism. Now, the energy of escapism, when we transmute this, this is taken in a large bundle, usually um, by going to a public place. It was collected by me. Uh, for me personally, this meant in Chicago going to the Department of Motor Vehicles. Now, ostensibly, I was there to renew my license, but my guides had me sit, and I could feel the energies gathering as if my body was a lightning rod, hold it, and then actually there were times when it took three full days for the energies to transmute. And uh, it got easier and easier as we went along. And I found my footing with, you know, how to get rid of it, what I did beforehand. Because some of the things that I did was I wouldn't eat. I would allow my body's energies to do the transmutation work rather than focusing on digesting food. And I still do that at times. Um, there will be times I abstain from eating sometimes for hours or a half a day or the better part of a day simply so that energies can be integrated or extricated for the purpose of making it easy on myself and then this way my body's energies are not you know splitting up my energy and, and depleting me so it's being judicious about where are you expending your energy and what are you doing also knowing what your purpose is and so escapism, ism, this is uh, a lot of addictions. It's um, running away. It's anything that becomes a distraction from being with your true love. It could be alcoholism. Uh, it could be drugs. It could be gambling. It could be being a shopaholic, a workaholic, somebody who is overly focused on being with other friends and not being with their twin. It can be anything that wants to escape and this came as the result of damage usually really hard planetary damage um, it could be a war situation in some cases it actually has been a case of a planet being blown to bits and naturally a spirit would want to escape when things start to seem like they're going in that direction. Now that's not the case anymore and yet getting rid of these energies has been uh, imperative to get rid of this for everyone's twin flame unions to take place. Another one, sexual distortions. Um, this is a really biggie for a lot of people where for many people, it may feel that they can only culminate or climax if they do things in a certain position or a certain way, and this in itself can be a distortion or certain ways of being sexual. Um, it can be certain uh, perversions of sacred sex. There's sacred sexual has now become distorted and it's over here. That needs to go. And some people have become aware that their twin does either have certain fantasies or certain things 
Now certainly in the context of your twin flame union, if there's trust, if there's love, if there's things you wish to try, nobody is here to be the police and say no. But what it is, is you understanding if this is painful, if this is painful at a spiritual level, it's got to go. Collectively, we've gotten rid of this. So anything that has had an overall effect of the collective consciousness and keeping it down or putting a lid on it, keeping things covered up, overshadowing it from moving into a higher consciousness has gone. And I've participated in this. I know for sure I'm not the only one to do this. Uh, another person who writes about a lot of this is a person named Denise LaFay, who I have a lot of respect for. Denise has never said she's a twin flame. However, she is here to receive the new templating, and she's done quite a bit of work. People who do transmutation work are very well aware of the darknesses. We're well, we're well, well aware of shadow men, distortions, distorted energy. We're well aware that as we pass through portals, there's stuff that goes. We are the entities that are able to bundle it up and we stick it into a black hole or it gets incinerated or obliterated. Our vibrations are such that we are entrusted to do this and in some ways um, this is not an all the time thing. This has been for the collective so that those walls come tumbling down. So that many of the perceived obstacles to your union just don't exist anymore. There's nothing to hold it up. So even things uh, such as what people will say about the Vatican or the government or the military, behind the scenes, these energies have been transmuted by either going into a black hole because these are the fears. These are the fears that have had us in a deadlock and holding everything in place. You know, it's stagnant energy. Boom, we've had it gone. And yes, I have personally participated in incinerating and obliterating certain energies. I was not alone, and that is the other thing to know about this, is it is not just on one person's shoulder. It didn't happen as a one-time event. It happened progressively. It is going in as an accelerated manner as possible, and yet it is progressing. So please trust that the major obstacles and walls to your union are gone, because um, I've participated in it, other people Things have been transmuted. What you're down to now is understanding that you don't need to live in fear and that you can step forward in a leap of faith and, yes, leave a situation, leave a job, move to a different country or a different part of the country, leave a relationship, whatever relationship that is. You can break up with alcohol. You can break up with drugs. You can break up with any other ism. Um, mental illnesses are starting to be right-sized. It also means that those people who have brought their gifts and talents here in order to help others will be able to step forward more and more with impunity where they will not be hindered. They will be also supported. And that the systems which uh, sometimes held this stuff locked in place, like there's no money from the government to pay for that kind of treatment, it's going to loosen up and we're going to start shifting around to really what needs to get done here. Be not afraid of moving forward on the things that you know either should be, could be, or would be and take those leaps of faith, knowing full well that globally and on a planetary scale, also a cosmic and universal scale that we have gotten rid of so much. What are some of the things we've obliterated? It's anything that's harmful at a soul level. It is hatred. It is anything of the lowest vibration of fear. Uh, very much a sense of ownership, which is one of the things that holds false twin energies in place. But because that's come down, these energies are actually dissipating. Does that mean that you just turn a blind eye and pretend it's not happening? No. It means that 
you can still proactively accelerate it out of your union. It's easier to do. This is, was not as easy to do 10 years ago. We were in a different time. We were in a different paradigm. So it's important for you within your union to discern what is usable, what is not usable, what is completely unhealthy and needs to go. Do your own transmuting work because it will serve you well. Own your own divinity. Own your own uh, power. Uh, it's up to you to really reclaim the twin that you are. Claim your union. Whose free will are you violating anyway if that is your soul and it belongs to you? That's an ownership aspect. That's got to go. That's got to be obliterated. You know, it's, it, it is something to discern. Should I still be in this relationship with a soulmate? Should I not? I'm not here to tell you no because I don't pretend to know unless, you know, it's you telling me I needed to learn this lesson or I needed that or I needed this part of the templating, then by all means. But please know that particularly for Illumin Twin Flames, many of you have been hanging around here waiting, waiting for some of this to be transmuted. Some of you for 26,000 years, some of you 13,000 years, some of you 11,000 years, and the most recent ascension 5,000 years. And I will say this, each and every time at those juncture points when we were going to affect a mass ascension, there was a war going on. And I want you to pay careful attention to your feelings during this time because there are still things going on in the world. And you have to continually catch yourself to be in the world but not of the world. Do not participate in those things best thing you can do because we are done with um, many of us are at the point where we're ready to step up and really be the love that is the real help that's needed here many of you are poised for that many of you are the illumines to do exactly this hold your twin kiss your twin be with your twin if you see an article on the news if you see something on the internet and there is quite a bit of disturbing things, my heart goes out to the people that have suffered. But I'm going to tell you something. Every single time that things have happened, I have learned not to cry. I, I do this thing that I call going back to the drawing board. I connect. I connect in a higher way. I connect with my guides. And I stay connected to my heart and my high heart. And not only does that get me by, it sometimes gives me the bigger picture, but it keeps me strong to keep going because it strengthens my union. It doesn't let those things in to be a distraction. And it's not that I don't want to help people. I'm here actually to help people in a different way. And so are many of you. Um, please know what is the purpose of your heart. Because for some of you who aren't with your twin, your twin may be feeling inadequate. They may be feeling angered at some of the world events that are occurring. And they do make me angry as well. They seem very futile. It seemed unnecessary, some of the events that occurred. And I will say this, I have um, personal friends affected by some of these events. And the point being that we're, we're still in a system here. In order to get out of it, you need your twin. Your vibration needs to be the highest it possibly can. And so it's incumbent upon us as twin flames to can fulfill our agreement of what we came here to do because people are counting on us for that. They're not counting on us to worry or be afraid for them. They're counting on us for that. And your twin is counting on you. They need to feel what their soul purpose is, their S-O-U-L purpose is. So thank you so much and I will be back with another video that will talk about uh, some other things coming up because life goes on here. There is still life. The people that have been affected by this, they are actually 
cycling through some of the things where they are doing actually very, very, very well. And I have that assurance from my guides. So please be the love, focus on your twin flame, and the next video we'll talk about the grid points. Thank you so much. Bye now.